Hello, and welcome to episode two of a three part video series on using Maxim's Max 32 630 Featherboard to drive an OLED display. If you haven't watched the first episode, you might want to go back and review that now. In episode one, Greg showed how to select the hardware components and get them ready to use. In this installment, Greg will go over the software environment and how to program the Featherboard to drive the OLED display. Here's Greg. Once all your boards have arrived and you've attached your preferred headers, you can get to loading the example program in to run the display. To do this, we'll go back to the main page for the Max 32630 Featherboard. One thing to note when you start using this board, you're going to need to make sure that it's been added to your compiler. So to do that, you can do that from the platform page and simply click the button Add to your Embed Compiler. This will make the board available in your account for compiling. Next, we'll go back and find that example application at the Apps Wiki page. Now from this page, we could go back to the Components page for a little more detail, but we've already seen that page, so we're going to jump straight to importing the program. You can see here is the Feather OLED example program. So simply click Import Program, and Embed will load a new page with the compiler and automatically import the program into your compiler's your workspace. We do want to program this or import this as a program. We can keep the name Feather OLED and click import. This is actually pulling in all the libraries as well as the source code for the example program. And here you can see in my programs we've got the Feather OLED project along with the libraries needed and the main. Let's just open up the main file real quick. And you can see there's a couple includes for some of the libraries. And it's a not too long of a program. Uh, a lot of the work's being done by the libraries. But once it's in our workspace, all you need to do to run the program is simply click Compile. This will take the libraries in the source code, compile them on the embed servers, um, and then once the compile is done, it will take the binary file and it'll actually save it to your hard drive. After the file's been saved to your hard drive, you can then drag and drop it onto the embed drive that appears when you connect the board. If we go to the directory where the browser saved the binary file, you'll notice that when you plug in the programming adapter, a new drive appears called daplink. Now remember when you're plugging, when you're programming the board, you will need to attach a USB cable to the programmer and to the feather board because the feather board needs the USB connection for power. It does not get its power over the SWD cable. But once both boards are connected and powered, you simply drag the binary file to the Daplink drive and that will load the new program into the feather board. Now I personally recommend programming the featherboard when nothing else is connected to it. I, I know it's tempting to plug the uh, the boards together as, as soon as you get those uh, headers soldered to them, but it's probably safest if you program it with nothing connected. Now, once we've got the file loaded into the board, we can go back to the breadboard Notice I'm connecting things without power to the board. 
First off, carefully install the OLED board into the feather board. Should slide in easy if everything's aligned. And because one row of headers is longer than the other, it's keyed. Now, when I apply power from a computer, note it does need to come from a computer because there's a USB library active. You'll see that the display lights up with some information. Reads the name of the board in the demo, and it gives some analog readings. And here, I've also, using the breadboard, wired in a little potentiometer. This example will display each of the analog inputs on the display, so the potentiometer allows me to adjust the voltage and see that on the uh, OLED display. Well, this one's not easy to change because it's a multi-turn pot. But you can see the voltages do change. You'll notice that analog input zero, when nothing's connected, its default is zero volts, which is a minimal scale. While, analog, while inputs two and three, they peg to the uh, full scale when unconnected. The reason for the difference is that analog input zero and one each have the option for a voltage divider so that they can read five volt inputs. Um, and this, this voltage divider provides a load when it, nothing's connected, it'll uh, pull it to ground. But the default high impedance state of the other two inputs happens to pull them high. In addition to the voltage readout, you'll also notice that it gives a status for each of the buttons. And if you look carefully, you can see a little color changing under the board. The button will light up an LED as well as display its status on the screen. So now you've assembled the hardware and built and loaded the software to drive the OLED display. But how does the software actually work? Well, in the next installment, Greg will guide you line by line through the code to show you how to customize the program to make it work for you. See you then.